Jesus Christ alone can set you free. Indeed, Jesus Christ has already set us free. Who already believe in Jesus Christ and trust in Him completely for our salvation and in His blood which washes away all our sins. Last time we talked about Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 in which it reads in the Word of God, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So it is not of works, it is by grace which God gives us when He died for us, even though we are sinners and we do not deserve to be saved. Thank God for saving us and dying on the, on the cross for us. And that is the only thing we boast is Jesus Christ and the cross. So we are we know from the last part that we are saved through Christ alone, grace alone, and through faith alone. And we cannot add anything or credit anything to that. Anything else we do for salvation is worthless because Jesus Christ work is complete. If we attempt to add anything to it, it will be like any man-made religions out there. For only man can come up with a religion where it is through our own works. Because you know man has pride. Whatever religious systems that man create, whether Buddhism or uh, Islam or any other religion that you have to put your work in to somehow contribute to your salvation, there's an element of pride in it. And you know that man is prideful. And Satan was prideful that he thought he was going to ascend into the clouds and be worshipped. And he wanted to be like God. He desires to be worshipped. So if, if there's element, any element of that, that is not of the truth and is not of Jesus Christ. Believing in Jesus Christ is not asking you to be religious, it's asking you to have a close relationship with Jesus. And through Jesus Christ, we are close with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we are His children. Now, verse 10 says in the Word of God, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we shall walk in them. So in verse 10, it says we are God's workmanship. So this is, this happens when we believe in Jesus Christ and we are in Christ. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we are in the body of Christ. It's a spiritual baptism. We are, we are baptized into Jesus Christ. And when we are the workmanship and we are created in Christ Jesus, we are all together a new creation. We are all together having a new desires in our heart for righteousness, for things that are pure and the things that glorify God. And we have the desire to serve God. Instead of being a servant to sin, we are alive unto God. We are dead to sin and we are alive unto God, as in Romans 6, and we, we have the newness of life. It is emphasized also in 2 Corinthians 5.17. This is a very familiar verse, and it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So the Holy Spirit indwells you. And spiritually we were dead, but it was regenerated. We have a newness of life and new desires to serve the Lord. New desires to be holy. New desires to live for the Lord. But that is in constant conflict, you know, with the flesh. We still have the flesh with the lust thereof. So we need to be more and more submitting to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict and guide us in the right paths, but sometimes the flesh will lead us astray.
That sometimes happens. We we are not perfect. We're not perfect in the performance. We cannot do everything perfect. But in status, we are perfect because we have the righteousness of God, not our own righteousness. We don't seek our own righteousness. So we are new creatures. We are new creations in 2 Corinthians 5.17. And we are created in Christ Jesus. Once we are new creatures, there is no license to sin. If we are new creatures, we have a new desire to serve God, just like all Christians, all believers in Jesus Christ. Everyone who's saved, we do not want to sin. Inside, deep inside our soul, our spirit, we do not want to sin. We want to serve God. We have new desires. We are workmanship, creating Jesus Christ for good works. That's our purpose. Wow, that's amazing. We get a great purpose. We get a purpose of living when we are created in Jesus Christ. is to do all these good works that He has prepared for us even before the foundation of the world. That is a far cry from thinking that people who are saved, thinking they have the license to sin. No, because just because we are saved by grace, because we sin, grace abound even more, does not give us the license to sin. It does not teach that, that we should sin, but just that we still will sin because we are still in this fallen world and we have not been caught up into heaven yet, where our body is transformed into the spiritual body that is the glorified body. With the, we don't have that flesh that will tempt, tempt us to sin, or Satan, or the evil spiritual forces of darkness that, that are Satan's minions that constantly lie and tempt us to sin. Let's read Romans chapter 6, 14 to 18. It will give you more clarification. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. You were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered you. Ah, you have obeyed in the heart the doctrine, which is the gospel, how you can be saved. In Ephesians, we are saved by grace through faith and not of works. It is a gift of God and also believing in the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection, and he died for us. He died for us for our sin, paying fully all the penalties. And he said, uh, his work is all sufficient. So when we believe in that doctrine, we are, verse 18 says, being free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. Now we become servants of righteousness instead of servants to sin. So that is very important. So believing in grace, does that mean that we believe we have the license to sin? Indeed, 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 says, we believers, when we are saved, we are called unto holiness. We are called to a holy life. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. So this is very, very important. Now let's read um, Romans 6. There are a lot of great verses in Romans 6. Let's start from uh, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. See, we are dead to sin. So then it keeps, and the next part is talk about our identification with Christ in baptism. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, remember we are baptized into Jesus Christ, it's a spiritual baptism, it's not talking about water baptism. We are baptized, not in water, but baptized into Jesus Christ. Were, know ye not 
that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. So we are baptized into his death, and we are baptized into his resurrection as well. Let's look at verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So this newness of life doesn't mean, it's really polar opposites in believing that we have license to sin. Walking in newness of life, meaning walking in righteousness, in a life that God has called us to do. Even if we don't want to sin, we still will. But God says, if we say that we have no sin, right? We deceive ourselves. God says, we still will sin. Okay, so now let's look at um, verse 10 and 11 in chapter 6. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. He lives it unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. So we have to reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we are dead to sin and alive unto God, living the life for God. We're alive to God. So we don't have the license to sin. Please press the subscription button and the notification button. Please check out the other videos and playlists in the channel. There are videos on life application and also spiritual growth. Please stay tuned for part three of Jesus Alone Set You Free. And if you have not seen part one, please see that video. And if you have not yet been saved and trusted Jesus in your salvation and want to know how to have eternal life, please watch my video that is in the description, How to Have Eternal Life. God bless you.